Now we're going to look at um, how to develop as a manager. So managers compared to leaders, managers is a formal role with formal authority. And management has, whoops, we went forward, let's go back. Management over the many years has grown and developed a number of theories. And we're going to look at those different theories. First of all, we have scientific management. This was introduced by Fred Taylor, Frederick Taylor. He was called the father of efficiency. He began his work, you know, in the Industrial Revolution era. And he had an idea that there was one best way to do something. And he also felt that people were uh, rewarded or motivated by financial rewards. So his main goal was based focused on being very efficient. Role theory developed from scientific management theory. And role th theory adds that there are socially desired norms, behavioral norms. There are three central components that are modeled after certain behavioral uh, behaviors, and those are role expectations, the assumptions of social roles, and the subsequent enactment of those roles. Maslow's hierarchy of need states that people have to meet certain basic requirements before they will move to higher areas of needs. So as a manager, you need to meet those basic requirements before they will move on to looking at higher level needs. So think about what the basic requirements are of your employees. They need to have a salary that will meet their needs. They need to have a safe um, environment. So think about those things. Make sure those things are provided to your employees before you ask them to go further. Then there is the path goal theory. This clarifies the relationship between the pathway employees take and their desired outcome or goal. Quantum theory states that nurse managers need self-awareness, vision, empathy. They need to have an analytical approach to problems, view problems as opportunities. Does, this person does not micromanage or be flexible. Does this sound similar to the uh, transformational leadership theory? I think that it does. And think about what kind of theory of management that you would prefer to work for. Also, th look at these different theories of management and think about how each parts of each of them could come together and uh, form a good manager. Next, we want to look at the roles and functions of managers. Managers are responsible, are responsible for all of these roles that are listed here that you can read. But in addition, a manager must continually develop and grow in order to best serve the organization and employees. To truly excel at managing, you must be willing to help each of your employees reach their professional goals, even if that means that employee will move on to another department or may even leave the organization altogether. When, employer, when employees know that you are interested in them and, and helping them develop and become more than what they are, they will work for you and will do anything for you. This is how you build a cohesive team. When they know that you, are, you have their best interest at heart, they really will follow you anywhere. So how do you get to know employees? How do you get to know what their goals are? Think about ways that you can find that out. Maybe meeting with them, having conversations with them. Don't let the annual performance review be the only time that you sit down and talk with your employees. Make regularly scheduled appointments with them so that you can check in and see how they're doing. Find out what their concerns are. Are you seeing a problem with their performance? You need to check in with them and find out what's going on. Let's take a look at Drucker's seven foundational management concepts. Peter Drucker is said to be one of the greatest thinkers about management um, in our time. And so these are some pretty specific concepts that managers all work with. So we have to understand and know how to work with all of these concepts. 
but we also have to be prepared to handle unexpected situations that aren't mis mentioned here. Um, you know, such as sudden unexpected employee sh uh, shortages, disaster situations, um, maybe your employees have all fallen ill or there's been some type of actual disaster and you're being overrun at the hospital, um, and also helping employees to grow and develop. So first of all, you have to manage salaries and wages and so forth. Make sure the job descriptions on the positions actually match what they are expected to do. That way you're sure to get the employee that's prepared to work at that particular job. You want to decentralize as much as possible. You want to avoid micromanagement. Uh, productivity being linked to scientific management. You have certain principles and guidelines that you have to meet. Uh, the manager development needed to ensure professional growth. As a manager, you will always be that lifelong learner, continuing to develop and grow the skills that you need. Uh, your job will evolve over time. The needs of your employees will evolve over time, and you need to be sure that you're in touch with that. Also, as different re regulations and policies and procedures change, you need to continually be, continually be up to date on that and also on job skills. Um, you want to use your information and in data analysis and decision making. Uh, so be familiar with informatics. Be a super user of whatever type of um, data management system you have, your uh, medical records, whatever it is that you're using for charting. Be sure you're very fluent in that and know how that works. Also, marketing services. You want to be sure that any material that's marketing your unit or your hospital uh, is really in line with, what's, with what is being offered. Also, take a look at what other services are being offered by similar units in other places so that you remain competitive in the market. And then you also need to be able to look at long-range planning. Next, we're going to look at the operational roles of a manager. So a manager is someone who establishes goals with employees. You need to help employees establish goals. And first of all, you have to determine how the goals are met. Employees don't always have really good skills with setting goals. Most of your employee management software, which is automatically helps you generate a template for your performance reviews will have a place for employees to list goals and for you to put in goals. So be sure that the goals that they are inputting and the goals that you are also creating are something that can actually be achievable so that your employee is able to achieve the goal and also uh, that has an impact on their promotion and also on pay raise and so forth. So be sure that those make sense. Also, the manager has to, to build an effective team. Budget, staffing, quality measures are all part of what the manager needs to do. The manager also provides feedback. So be sure that you're providing appropriate feedback to your workers. This promotes better work processes and provides opportunities for team development. Let's take just a, a moment to look at the um, National Database of Nursing Quality Indicators. These are the databases that measure quality for nursing service. These were developed by the ANA, and um, many of the hospitals in the country use these. Um, you can go to their website and find out information about what they are and what the indicators are and how that they are used. These can have an impact on reimbursement level for the hospital. They also are uh, part of JACO core measures, your Joint Commission core measures and so forth. And you can see these are the specific measures that are measured by uh, the quality indicators as well. So be sure that you're familiar with that. Um, the American Association of uh, the American Association of Nurse Executives conducted some research in 2006, looking at uh, what some of the domains of the nurse manager are. 
and they looked at three main domains. That's creating the leader in yourself, the science, managing the business, and the art of leading people. And a study that was conducted in Australia among 2,488 nurses indicated that job satisfaction was very closely tied to the nurse manager. So as a nurse manager, you're going to create the culture that exists in your unit. Favored managers have these following characteristics, high visibility, consultation with staff, recognition and praise, and overall perception of the manager as a good leader. Quality of care and professionalism. Managers are responsible for assurance that quality of care is maintained. The manager must also model the behavior that's expected from employees. In addition, the behavior of the manager should promote autonomy, accountability, and self-control. Quality measures must be assessed, reported, and problems addressed. Reporting for measures is the manager's responsibility. A good manager builds a solid team who is loyal, effective, and satisfied.